Hello, hello guys. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Welcome into my studio, my very hot studio. It is 92 degrees in Georgia and my volume is gonna go on my computer. I hear it right now. <laughs> Let's turn that off so we don't have an echo. Hello, Anne and Linda and Monty and Linda and Yvonne and Letitia and Kay and Cindy. I could go on. And Donna <laughs> and Darlene. Hello, guys. Hi, Virginia and Margie. Hello, Kathy. Oh, yes, it's hot everywhere, right? Especially if you are in the south. Um, Texas is getting really, really heated up and hot. Um, hi, Cindy. Hi, Mary. Hi, Karen. Hi, Lucy. I've missed you too, guys. I've missed you, Karen, as well. Um, who, what did I just see? Hello, Peg from Ohio. I feel like I've been gone a month. <laughs> I've only been gone, um, what, a, a couple of weeks. So my last live I did on the, when was that? <laughs> the 4th? Um, I can't even remember because I've been out of town. Hello, Molly Ann. So good to see you guys on. Hi, Suzanne. Um, but it's good to be here. 110, Linda, in Arizona. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Nancy. Wow, that's super duper hot. Oh, hi, Denise. Thank you. It's raining pretty hard there in Tennessee. Hmm. I know rain is much needed. Um, <laughs> when we were in Denver... Oh, my goodness gracious, the rain would not stop. I mean, it did, but we had hail. We drove through hail. Um, someone just texted me. Um, and it was crazy weather, crazy, crazy weather. And then we're gone, and we go to the Grand Canyon, and they have a tornado in, te in um, Denver. I mean, how crazy is that, right? So I had a fantastic time. I'll tell you guys a little bit about it, but... Um, I don't want to spend a, a ton of time doing that, so we'll talk for about 15 minutes or so. But you know me, I kind of get long-winded and just <laughs> forget about the time. Hi, Margaret. From New Zealand, six degrees there. Yes, because the seasons are switched, right? I'm so glad that you're here. Actually, in fact, that reminds me, drop in the comments where you're joining me from because I love to see where all of you guys around the world are joining me from. I have to tell you, there's a tie, and it kind of flip-flops back and forth because I can go into, like, the back end of my page and see where people are viewing from, and it kind of goes back and forth between California and New York. Um, so, and the weather is absolutely gorgeous in Colorado now, right? Yes, my niece was telling me. So, it's... Um, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. 63 in Santa Maria, California. That's a little unheard of this time of year, right? Yes, the weather was chasing us. 91 in Oklahoma. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Hi, Barb, <laughs> neighbor. So, oh my goodness. Hello, Helen. Hi, Cindy and Mary. Lots of Marys and Linda's on today. Change to Facebook. Is it messing up over on um, YouTube? Hi, Debbie Sears. 91 in um, Florida. Yes, it's 93 here. When I first started, it was 91. My computer just updated, and it's 93. And y'all know I live in Georgia. It's hot and very humid. So, hi, Linda from Winnipeg. Hello, Madeline. So good to see you on 78 in Buffalo. Hi, Janet. Supposed to be very hot down here in the Florida area, 90s. Yeah, you know, summer's here. <laughs> and I think summer's here to stay for a while. I will say, like I always do though, I would much rather have the heat than to be cold. So um, I don't like, I like to look at snow and I like to be in the snow for about maybe 10 minutes max. But I'm a, I'm a, you know, Florida... I just saw that Florida 90 something. Um, I am a summer, um, I don't mind the temps, let me just say that. So, preferably in the 80s with a nice cool breeze, sitting by a pool, but can't have everything, right? So, YouTube let, wouldn't, wouldn't let you comment. Well, that's mean of YouTube. Well, I'm glad you're here, Suzanne. 
So, yeah, so we are streaming on both, on uh, YouTube and also on Facebook. So, again, let me know where you're viewing from today. And if this is your first time, would love to know that. Just woke up from your Sunday afternoon nap. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I have to get my water. Um, you grew up in snow, Loretta? Yeah, you know, I grew up in Southern California up until seventh grade, and then we moved to Tennessee, which I loved, but at the same time, we didn't have a lot of snow in Memphis, so I didn't grow up around it. Then we moved to Iceland for two years and Nebraska for three years, and let me tell you, I had my fill of snow and ice and my fill of black ice, so... Well, lots of people still over on YouTube, so hopefully that's not, not an issue for everybody. Um, yeah, I'm not big on the humidity um, because <laughs> girlfriend still has her 80s hair and it gets a little frizzy. So, hi, Sharita. So good to see you guys on. Um, hi, Linda. 80 in Grants Pass, Oregon. I met so many shop owners from Oregon, Seattle, kind of that area um, at the show. I was just at, hello, Deborah McDonald. Um, oh, okay. Thanks. Um, thanks for letting me know that, Linda. You know, again, sometimes these platforms are a little crazy, but again, I love that I get to be on and share with you guys from one end of our country to the other up to Canada. Um, down south, across the pond in Europe, and then all the way to New Zealand and Australia and everywhere else. So um, sometimes we just have to deal with all the glitches, right? So, um, like you've been gone for longer than long, right? <laughs> I know, Denise. I have. Feel, I felt like I've been gone for a while. So, um, and if you can hear it in my voice, I'm fine. It's just I'm a little tired. So I got in on Friday. So let me backtrack. I taught fantastic classes in um, Colorado and just had a fantastic time with those ladies. I've painted with them before. My husband got to go with me this time. So we, um, we traveled by car, had a fantastic road trip. Um, like I said, oh, I missed you guys too. Thank you. And then we went down to the Grand Canyon because that was my thing when I found out that I was going to Colorado. I told my husband, you're going to be retired. Let's go to the Grand Canyon. It's always been on your bucket list. Now, I will say I had to twist his arm because, you know, it's not real cheap to fly in a helicopter over the Grand Canyon. But I just said, we're doing it. We booked it. The best experience by far. I mean, it was amazing. And... Honestly, it's one of the best ways to see the Grand Canyon because you get to see so much of it. So we um, drove from here through K uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Kans uh, Missouri, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, then down to New Mexico and um, Arizona. Anyway, we were at the Grand Canyon for a couple of days. And then we left there and went to spend the night in Amarillo, Texas. And just north of that, they had a tornado the night we were there. Um, sad pictures coming from that. Um, and then we drove to Tennessee to stay the night at my sister's house and then home. So I got home on Saturday and I had to go get my nails done because they were pretty ragged. Um, and I was doing a show this past week with DecoArt in Vegas, so they needed to be done. So I got home, called my girl, can you do my nails? <laughs> so went and did that. My husband did all my laundry. I'm very spoiled. Um, and then on Sunday, caught up, you know, with the house and life and emails and everything else. And I flew out Monday morning. I had to be at the airport at... I think seven o'clock and I drove through the most torrential downpour rains and lightning. It was scary um, getting to the airport Monday morning. And so I've kind of stopped looking at the comments because I <laughs> get distracted, but I will go back and answer any questions. Okay. I know sometimes it's a little difficult on YouTube. Um, my trips were fabulous. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Um, so I, um, Got home Sunday, went to the airport Monday, flew to Vegas, 
And my um, great friend Stacy, who's the national sales rep for DecoArt, wasn't coming in till later. So I went and did all my favorite things that I used to love to do when I would go to creative painting every year in Vegas. I walked in and out of casinos, I walked up and down the strips, had 20,000 plus steps on my, um, my uh, tracker thing, and it was just an awesome, awesome time. Let me just say my feet and my legs were a little sore. Um, and then Tuesday we set up the booth, and you'll probably see I have <laughs> war wounds, I have bruises. I bruise kind of easy. But if you have done trade shows, if you do a booth at any kind of craft fair, you know you're going to end up with nicks and cuts and bruises and everything, right? <laughs> it is not for the faint of heart. So, yeah, so it was a horrible storm all over Georgia on Monday. And I really was worried if I was going to be able to get out of here. Um, how many hints as to when the new So Soft paints... So, Lori, I'm not exactly sure. I do know that they're going into Joann's, um, but I don't know when. Um, now, let me just say, you can still order So Soft paints from DecoArt. The other ones that I shared at NAMTA, the Thrift Flip, are So Soft. They just have a different label. Um, you know, kind of a remarketing thing because the pandemic, one of the, the number one hashtags was Thrift Flip. Um, and that's what I used when I did um, the Peacock and things like that. So, um, to me, the best number one fabric paint on the market. So, anyway. Hi, Pam. Hi, Patty. I'm already starting to sweat in here. <laughs> um, anyway, so then I got to share some really cool things with the um, their shop owners, um, like Dick Blick, we got to go to, I went to dinner with the Dick Blick people one night, which was awesome, and um, hang out with some really cool friends, and then really connected with some people that I've only been acquaintances with, um, and let me just tell you, at 55, it's so nice to be able to build genuine, really cool relationships with women, um, men too, but women, you know what I'm talking about, and so I had a couple of those experiences on this trip, and I just kind of came home, you know, just on a, I don't know, it just, it was amazing, amazing. And again, I'm, I'm so grateful that I get to work with DecoArt, an incredible company, and share their incredible products. Um, and the product that I was sharing was Wax Effects, and I actually had a hand in that product becoming a product. Um, and so that's super cool, too, to see something that you had an idea about and then work it to a product, to a finished product that people are raving about and super excited about. So um, it just fills my heart, absolutely beyond. So um, I'm not going to carry them, Kathy. I will let you guys know when they're going to be available on DecoArt's website. They are available on Dick Blick. Um, I do have a coupon code, and I don't know if I have it on here. Um, it's my DecoArt coupon code. But if you're interested in getting them, um, when they're available on DecoArt, I'll let you know because I'll give you that code and you can get 20% off. So I love girl time too, right? <laughs> it's fun. So um, I am home the rest of the month, which is what? This week? Um, because then it's July and I'm home the entire month of July. But I know Kathy and my friends in Colorado can attest that all I kept saying was, oh, I'll do that in July. Oh, I'm going to do that in July. So July 1st to when, how many days are in July? Every day will be sun up to sundown because I have a lot of things that need to be done in July. So going to be a busy, busy, busy month. Let me just say, Kathy, thank you so much for putting that link. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh my goodness, Cheryl, you've got severe thunderstorms. Oh, so sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's just crazy, crazy weather all around. So I literally had my hair up in a clip before we went live, and I thought, oh, I'm going to take it out. It's kind of giving me a headache. <laughs> I have no clue what my hair looks like right now. Um, and I will be calling my girl because I'm getting this cut. It's too long for summer. Summer hair needs to be a little bit shorter for me. So... Hi, Linda from Michigan. Okay, so let's start with the first person on YouTube 
So let me know what free e-packet that's currently on my website, what e-packet is currently on my website, not free, um, that you would like, and I will email it to you, okay? And so on YouTube, it was Ann McGow, and on Facebook, Cindy Braden, but I was writing your name so fast, the A got real big, so I rewrote it. Anyway, message me what e-packet you'd like, and I will send that to you after the live, okay? Hi, Carol. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Dawn. Good to see you on, as always. Um, so, yes, and thank you guys so much for all the orders that were patiently waiting for me to get back and get shipped. I was able to get them shipped um, on that Sunday before I left, and then the ones that came through the week um, was able to get them shipped out yesterday. So, backtrack a little bit. I got home Friday. I think I rolled in uh, maybe around four o'clock in the afternoon, somewhere around there. And if you see these gorgeous flowers behind me, um, the tradition continues. And if you're not sure about the tradition, every time I would travel before the pandemic, my husband would always have the most amazing flowers waiting for me when I got home. Um, my studio right now smells so incredible because these white peonies are giving off the most fragrance that I have ever smelled in a flower, let me just say. So, oh, you're so welcome, Cindy. Yeah, just let me know which one you want. Um, so I got home Friday, and then I had two of my sons come and visit yesterday and my son's girlfriend. So they got here yesterday around, oh my gosh, maybe 11. And I have to tell you, at first I was thinking I have so much to do, and that quickly changed to, nope, my boys are coming in town, and I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so um, my husband prepared all the meals, got everything, did all the shopping before, uh, knowing that they were going to be here on Saturday. So they left today, and um, it was just so good to be able to come home after two very long trips and have my time with my sons um, and his girlfriend, and then also to be home with my husband. So it's nice to be home, and I'm looking forward to all of July being home. So, um, and then I get to see my youngest in July as well. So that's a big bonus. Um, anyway, they are, I mean, seriously, you just can't, there was a part of me at one point, I'm just like, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I can't, I've got to do that. No. Um, my kids are so important to me. My husband's so important to me that I have to make that time for them. So I have so much, I know some of you probably watching right now are waiting for things from me and I will get them to you, guess when? <laughs> July. So, anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa. I know, I know. It's, it's so hard. You know, I have one that lives in Atlanta and one that's in Atlanta, job-wise, but remote, and he's going to be in Washington. And then my baby is in Connecticut. So, that's hard, but um, I'm... A super proud mom of three extremely talented and successful boys and um, yeah so anyway all right let's look at some comments here real quick I'm seeing it's hot it's hot it's hot my husband my hubby's a keeper he sure is Janet he is he spoils me rotten and let me just tell you someone uh, Nancy actually was asking about where he gets the flowers hi Holly and um, he either goes to Publix Grocery Store, which if you're in the South area, you know Publix, or Kroger. And he buys them individually, and then he puts them together in arrangement. And they just, are they not gorgeous? I mean, they're so pretty. So, and then what I do, hi Carrie, what I do is I take pictures from all angles. Um, and I really love to get like the back of a flower, like a sunflower or the side of a lily with the stamens coming out. So I take a ton of reference photos of all those beautiful flowers that he gives me so that they can show up in my designs. So anyway, hi, Carol. Hi, Carol. Absolutely. Spending time with family is always, always important. It sure is. Kroger does have great flowers, don't they, Tara? And so does Publix. I mean, you can get three bunches for $12. I mean, you can't beat that. So anyway, I lost my train of thought because there was something I was going to tell you guys. Oh, <laughs> I remember designs and using flowers for my designs. So I've gotten some emails and some questions lately. When are you going to come out with a companion piece to this? 
Or when are you going to do the next in this series of, um, I did the penguin and the bear and the nutcracker. And then remember I did the bunny before Easter. And I was going to do and have it drawn out a lamb, a little fox, a deer. And I can't remember. I have five of them in that series. So um, this is the thing with that. As you guys see, if you follow me on my social media or you know me personally, I am all over the place a lot. When I'm home, I have a fantastic membership group that I get to spend time with three to four times a month um, on top of everything else. So I was beating myself up like I get it, get it, got to get it done, got to get it done and really down on myself that I was not getting it done. Um, and then I finally had a talk with myself. <laughs> do you guys do that? I had to have a little talk with myself and remind myself that um, it's not a race. I can't compare. I have to get it done when I can get it done. Um, now that I'm back to travel teaching, there are a lot of responsibilities with that and deadlines with that. So um, I will be coming out with them and I will, of course, let you guys know when I will be. Um, but I just cannot continue to beat myself up because I didn't get it done. Um, so I appreciate all the messages and like, when is it coming? Because to me, that makes you guys, uh, makes me know that you guys are excited about it. Um, and I promise you they will be coming. Okay. <laughs> so not in July though. July's packed. So you could retire. Oh my goodness. There's a bug in my studio. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry. Sorry. I don't know where you came from, but he's gone now. Um, what did I say? You could retire if you could clone your hubby. Just say, all right. <laughs> um, what your day doesn't have more 24 hours in it? No, unfortunately it doesn't. Thank you, Molly Ann. Absolutely. You know, I'm really good at telling you guys things and a lot of times really hard on myself and don't listen to my own advice. Um, but, oh, Yvonne, yes, those lilies smell so good too. But those peonies are overtaking the whole arrangement. So um, I wish I had more than 24 hours. I try to maximize as many hours in a day that I can. Um, but I also have to be realistic. I am a workaholic. I tend to work from the time I get up to the time I go to bed. Um, but now that my husband's retired, I do want to take more time and, you know, not work till 9 o'clock at night. So anyway. <laughs> Y'all are sweet. My baby, uh, Janet, he works at Skokorsky Helicopters in Bridgeport. And he's in Shelton. I think he's in Shelton. So, anyway, thanks, Yvonne. I know. I miss seeing you, Mary. Oh, my gosh, I hope you're doing well. My neighbor, not too far away. Um... I know, I know. I, all this advice coming that I really freely give to so many people and I tend to not take myself. Um, but again, okay, it is 423 and we need to get started. <laughs> so I had some giveaways um, on my last live, which I couldn't even tell you, I think it was two weeks ago. And um, I had three sets of brushes. So I had a set of black gold. I have a number 10 flat, a filbert, and a round. And the winner of that that came up on the wheel, I put all y'all's name in the wheel after the live. And then before I go live on my next live, I take all the new names. So if you watch the replay, make sure you comment because your name gets to go in um, on the wheel as well. Okay? So Susan Rogers message me your mailing address and I will get these shipped off to you. Let me say again, if you're seeing this for the first time and it's three weeks later, unfortunately, after two weeks, these go back into my stash to give away. So I do give two weeks for you guys to um, claim your giveaway prize. Unfortunately, if you don't, I can't track you down. There's so many of you that are on YouTube that um, don't have, you know, your profile or whatever showing. So you need to message me and let me know. Okay. Now, then I had a set of um, faux squirrels. So I'm a dynasty specialist. Love my dynasty brushes. Love that company. Fantastic. Family owned in New York. 
um, the last brush manufacturer in the country. Um, and so these are a set of faux squirrel brushes. So it's a three quarter flat, a number 10 flat, and a three eighths angle. And the winner of those is Carol Archer. Carol Archer, your name came up on the wheel. So message me and let me know your mailing address and I will get those shipped to you. I don't want to throw these somewhere. I don't want to ruin them. I'm going to put them right there. Okay. And then the last, can I hold you to not working? <laughs> yes, Barb. Thank you. You can text me and say, are you in bed yet? <laughs> Um, okay, and then the water lily brushes, and I've gotten some emails about these, so let me tell you about the water lily brushes real quick. They were made for watercolor primarily. I'm a big believer in using a brush and seeing what it can do um, in other mediums as well. So I love these for glass. If you like to paint on glass, these are soft enough because they're watercolor brushes. So they've got a really nice soft bristle filament in them, um, this one is a zero. Um, love that round. Now, you don't take the metal part off, you leave it on. If you do, basically your brush is gonna fall apart, okay? And then a um, half inch, which is like a flat, I think it's a bright actually, and a filbert brush, okay? And the winner of those is Wanda Sapp. Wanda, your name popped up on the wheel. So, Oh, well, Janet, I'll have to let you know because I will be coming up there hopefully soon this year. So um, if not this year, definitely next because we want to do that whole um, New England, doing all the leaves and everything. Okay, so those are the giveaways for the last live. I have three giveaways for this live, and all you have to do is, let's see where it says it, <laughs> right there, like, comment, share. Um, that gets you entered into the drawing. And like I said, if you're watching the replay, I do put your name on the wheel as well. I just don't have the time to do it during the live. Um, so anyway, like, comment, share. When you share to a group or whatever, make sure you've got permission to be able to do so. So the three giveaways that I have, I've got a brush set. I have a um, laser cut chipboard set, new pieces that I haven't um, shown yet. And then I have a new wood cutout piece that I'm going to actually be launching at OKC Painting Palooza. And speaking of OKC Painting Palooza, if you're not familiar with that, I'm gonna pop up this little ad. It is in August. There's still time to register for it. It's a fantastic convention. These are the two classes that I'll be teaching there. Um, and we're gonna have so much fun. It's a wonderful convention, okay? Now, before this convention, I'm actually going to be in Pearland, Texas. And there's the information for that. This is in person and on Zoom. So if you wanna do some fabric painting and do my Ruby um, hibiscus on fabric, you can contact Nanette and she will get you signed up and stuff, okay? So excited that they decided to also do on Zoom as well as in person. Um, and then I have more coming up in September and I will share those on the next live, which is going to be next Sunday. Okay. So, um, what was that? Oh, Carol Archer. Yes, you did win. You won some brushes. So private message me, um, your mailing address and I will get those shipped off to you tomorrow. Okay. So going when I get back, I'll have to catch the rest on replay. Oh, okay, Linda, no problem. Thank you for sprinkling, Loretta. I appreciate that. It won't let you share. Well, oh, bummer. I'm also not seeing in the comments the little star. Um, but if you see a star in your comments and you donate to that, that money goes to the World Central Kitchen, which is helping feed people across the world. Um, and then same thing on YouTube. If you use that little dollar donation thing in the comments, that money goes, and we have donated almost $800 to them. So um, thank you, thank you guys so much. Linda, you're here, you're commenting, you're entered. Don't worry, okay? Let's get started though. So I feel like I'm, <laughs> I've had about 10 cups of coffee today. So I actually slept really, really good, but you know, going, going, going. Um, 
it kind of takes its toll just a little. I'm going to move that. Let's zoom in just a little. Okay, so two weeks ago I did this one, and I shared with you guys how to do a design. Um, what is this about? What is what about, Loretta Ward? So, um, and yes, Nancy, my brother-in-law did. Okay, so I shared this with you guys a couple weeks ago, and we used a stencil. What I wanted to share with you guys today is how to take a rubber stamp and do something very similar. And I thought I would do companion pieces. So this is the one I did two weeks ago. I'm going to do a butterfly today. And with my membership group, I'm going to do a dragonfly. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. What am I doing? Oh, we're painting Loretta. Buckle up. We're about to have some fun mixed media, um, creative fun, okay? So I am going to take this wood canvas panel. I went ahead and I painted it white. Hi, Betty. Thank you, Marty. I love the B2. I love the B2. In fact, I'm going to put it up here because I don't want to forget to, to tell you about it. So I wanted to do, again, a companion piece. So they're the same size. It's a 10 by 10. This is a flat panel. I only had one bummer, um, but there's the information on it. These are fantastic little panels. Um, so I'm so sad that you can't be there, Teresa. I'm gonna miss you so much because that's our time we usually get to catch up. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And this is a Stampenda stamp. It is no longer available, but I do have it in stock. Um, and I want to show you how to stamp with um, ink and then also with paint, okay? So I'm going to move this out of the way for a minute and grab, I don't know if that's big enough. It is, okay. So let's do paint first. My preferred way is with stays on ink because you can use your rubber stamp and you can paint over it and you can use it over paint and it's not going to bleed. All right, so, but let me show you with paint first. So I'm gonna take some lamp black. You can use whatever color you want, but I'm going to just put out a little bit of paint and then I'm gonna use a brayer. So I have these little mini brayers on my website. They have these nice little feet so that you can um, set it down and the roller's not gonna touch your surface. So you wanna turn it over and then we want to pull this paint down and just make a little bit of a runway. Okay. Now you have a couple choices. You can either put the brayer over your stamp or you can put your stamp right into the paint. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that you've got a nice thin runway. Okay. And then again, I'm going to roll it right over the stamp come here roll it over and you do want to work quickly I mean paint dries pretty fast right okay so cool thing is and I'll show you in a second because I don't want my paint to dry <laughs> um, so we're gonna take that lay it in place press it down hi Gloria Oh, that's awesome, Lisa. I love when that happens, when someone really wants to see how something's done. And right here, I'm sharing it with you. Okay, so you just want to press that down. Now, you can see, kind of missed a couple places. You can take an Identa pin and fill in the little areas that maybe it missed. Okay? Just like that. So that's with paint. Now, anytime you use paint with your stamps, you want to make sure you get it off. So I'm going to just take a baby wipe, and let me show you what baby wipes, because that's probably one of the number one questions I get after I do a live. I don't want that to, you know when acrylic paint dries and it gets a little brittle, and I don't want it to crumble on my piece. So. I use, where are they at? I get these. They're fragrance free. They have no lotion. I get them at Wally World, at Walmart. Um, 
and they work great for me. And we're gonna use them in this background like we did with the bee, okay? So I do too, who was that that said? Loretta said about butterflies. I do too, I, butterflies, bees, dragonflies, absolutely love them. So let me move this out of the way. And we're just gonna let this dry for a second. So on these brayers, you can pull on the end and you just take that and stick it into your water basin or your little water bath. And um, my little foot fell off there. So we'll stick that back on, wash it, put it back on to use for later, okay? So now I'm gonna take a paper towel and dry this. Yes, Janet, that is my plan to submit to Nat. The reason I did it for this year was because um, at the time, OKC had not switched to August. It was still in October. And those are two big trips for me since I drive and I do a booth in Oklahoma. I did not want to take a chance of getting sick. So I decided to um, just submit to OKC. But it is my plan to submit to Nat. As well as the new convention that's going to be in Chattanooga and I'll be sharing a lot of that with you guys soon. Alrighty. Why do you leave the plastic on? Well this plastic you don't want to pull off because it has the image of that butterfly. If I pulled that off it would be gray rubber. See? And the other thing is I can use it as my holder to place it down. Okay? You could use um, one of the blocks, a stamp block, but I tend just to hold it like that. Okay, so when I get done with my background, I'll show you how I'm gonna do it with the ink, all right? But let's get our piece, and I am winging it, just like I did with the bee. Not a thousand percent sure what um, colors I'm gonna use. I did grab some, thinking, oh, that would look cute, that would look cute, and we'll just kinda see where it goes, right? So I'm gonna get a baby wipe, all right, I'm gonna get a baby wipe. And I think I will start with, hmm, decisions, decisions. I think I'm gonna start with Bahama Blue, okay? Because what I love about this stamp, um, it's got some really pretty flowers on it. It'll have a lot of black and white. Um, and we're just gonna go from there. So ooh, let's put that to the side. So Bahama Blue, remember, do yourself a favor. Take off those little <laughs> things that will help your paint close better, okay? And I'm gonna take the baby wipe and I'm gonna wrap it around my two fingers, put that into the palm of my hand. I'm going to, thank you, Angie, I loved the bee. I loved how it came out. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm kind of doing like a crazy eight. Okay, just a little bit of a crazy eight. Thank you so much, Kathy. I greatly appreciate that. I try and share tons of tips and tricks. I will say I share a lot with y'all, but I share even more with my membership group. Um, when I started it, that was the, my number one goal was to be able to share what I could um, and then some with my group. Now this has sides on this panel. I'll do that later. But what I wanna do now is just move that and I'll change to a different color. And I think I'm going to use, hmm, I think I'm gonna use, okay, in the comments, real quick, you guys tell me. This kind of the color combination I was thinking of. But I'm thinking I really like that sour apple too. But four would be too many. Hi, Diane. So do I leave out the orange or do I leave out the green? Leave out the orange, leave out the green. Which one should I leave out? <laughs> Just let me know in the comments. I know I'm using this, so I'm going to start using the pink. So I'll put a little bit of that on my palette. All right, leave out the orange, leave out the green. Let me know. Okay, so I'm going to take that and wrap it around my fingers. Leave out the green, sour apple instead of orange, green, leave out the orange. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take some pink 
and just a little, don't need a lot. And um, we're gonna put a little bit of that on. Now what's gonna happen is that's gonna turn a little bit of purple here and there. But I loved how that B turned out where it was just very kind of um, muddled and slightly blended, but you could still see the separate colors and the combination of colors. Leave out the orange, leave out the orange. Okay, so. Maybe I'll leave out the orange in the background, but I'll use it on the flowers somewhere. Okay, so again, see we've got this little kind of muddled look going on. And then, Okay, it's green. We're gonna use some green. So, put a little bit of that on my palette, and I'm gonna dry it right now because I don't want the green and the pink to mix too much. I want it to uh, be a little bit more um, on its own. We'll see. So, got a little blue, a little pink, turned to a little bit of purple. I love those colors together too. Leave out the orange. Okay guys, orange is out, but we will use it somewhere else. Okay. So I'm gonna take that and just wrap it around my fingers again, pick up a little bit of the green. Oh yeah. And that sour apple has a little bit of a yellow cast to it. It's so pretty. So. Just gonna put a little bit here and there, but not everywhere. And then I'll decide where things are gonna go once I get all my colors on. I'll decide, oh, that butterfly needs to go here, or the words need to go there, so. Okay. Now I'm kind of feeling like I want to bring a little bit more of that blue back. So I am going to get some of that Bahama blue. Bring some of that back in. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Take a little bit of that off. Okay. So sometimes when I do a background, if I'm like, oh, it's just too busy, it needs to kind of, you know, soften and come together. I'll do a wash of colors over it, like a wash of gesso or a wash of white or a wash of um, warm white just to soften it and, um, you know, bring it all together. But I'm going to stencil in the background actually with some white. So let's just make sure this is 100% dry. And it is. And then you also want to make sure that it's not hot before you go to put more paint on or it just takes it and it does not move. All right, let's go ahead and get some white out. And I'm using, this is um, titanium white, and let me just show you the other colors I use, Decoart Americana Sour Apple and Fuchsia Pop, okay? So those, oh, and Bahama Blue. So those colors in the background, and I'm gonna grab a stencil brush, um, and I just cut these these are going out with all orders on my website between now and um, the end of the week, and they most likely will go into other orders as well. I cut a few different ones. Some of you have already gotten these. Um, I think they're fun. So, And then it also comes with the part that is actually cut out, and that you can lay on spray with your paint, like misters and things like that, and you get that really nice outline, but I'm going to use this part. So I'm going to load up my brush with white. Let me get a paper towel here. Load it up with white, swirl it around on my palette like you can see there on the right of the screen. And then I'm going to wipe almost all of it off. And then I'm just going to kind of lay this here and there. Get a little bit of that design. We'll see if it shows up. I might need to switch to yeah, that's not really showing up that well. Let's switch to, hmm, decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to switch. I shouldn't, but I am. <laughs> I'm going to switch to some quinacridone magenta. Do I want to do that? 
or do I want to do, see, this is the thing with winging it. It's like decisions, decisions. I think I'm going to go with this because you know why? That's going to tie it in with my B and the coloring with my B. Um, I do, Linda, if you go on my website, um, if you're a member, you have your own discount code, which is always the best discount anywhere. Um, but on my website, if you do A-R-T, all capitals, I'll pop it up right there, A-R-T, um, on my website and hit enter, you get a discount on all the orders to include things on sale. Okay, oops, hello. So I think that will look really pretty. And if it doesn't, right, it's paint, we will take care of it. So let me get another stencil brush. I do, oh, I do right there. Find a, I'm using um, a Dynasty Stencil Pro. This is a 3 8. I like the smaller size, um, especially when I'm doing smaller stencils, and I don't want it solid. So I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to try and stay, I think, just a little around the edge. And the, the Media Fluid Acrylics, DecoArts Media Fluid Acrylics are transparent, so you're still going to see a lot of that color underneath. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's cool. Now, if you put on a stencil and you're like, eh, it's a little too dark, you can take a paper towel, you can take a baby wipe, and you can wipe some of it back. Usually, I'm not that patient. I just use my hand. So, and then we want this to go all different directions. And it not be the entire um, pattern of those leaves. So see how I'm leaving some of it off the edge? And I'm just trying to make sure I go right around the edge of that stencil to get some of the, the leaves. So that one goes that way. You can flip your stencils, guys, and make them go different directions. You could also tape them. I'm usually impatient. Don't take the time to. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Kay, for answering that to Holly. Yes, it is Fuchsia Pop. Um, I don't take the time to tape them down. I usually am just going on to the next thing. So, But we'll have our butterfly here, so I think I will go ahead and pop some of that in there. And then let's turn, wait, let's see. Let me see where I'm going to put my butterfly. I think I'm going to put my butterfly maybe here. Um, not that it matters right now, but I was just trying to see which corner I liked the best. Oops, see there's a little too much. So I'm gonna lay my hand down, take a paper towel, wipe some of it off. You can also take a little sanding block. Like these nail files are absolutely amazing. Um, and you can just kind of sand that so it's not perfect. Okay, we just want it to be a part of that background. Um, and when I saw this um, leaf little fern thing, I knew that I had to um, incorporate it into my little giveaway freebie things. I always love to fill orders with some nice little stencils or a freebie. So then let's do, let's maybe do just the edge there. Again, since I'm not doing a solid, um, you know, the whole thing is not covered in, it can have little pieces and parts and it won't really matter where the stem is coming from. You can't really tell anyway. I'll just do a little bit here. Maybe a little there. Okay, I'm digging that. So, super cool, huh? I mean, soft, subtle, nice little background. And then again, tying it into the colors are very similar to what I used. So they'll go, um, and I might even put some of that around the edges like I did on that one. We'll see. Okay, now what I want to do is... Um, it looks like you're laying glass looking up through the foliage. Oh, absolutely. I can so totally see that, Suzanne. Great point. Okay. Hi, Jackie. Good to see you on. Thanks, Mary. I love that background too. Okay. Again, 
If you do a background like that and you're like, ugh, it's just a little too much, I need to soften the look, I am gonna soften it because I do wanna make it a little more subtle. Um, you can take a big, big brush. So these are my go-to base coat brushes. I love to do washes. Um, ooh, you could use wax effects too, Loretta. And I am gonna do another live soon with wax effects, okay? Um, but this is a number one black gold flat wash and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and I'm just gonna wash it over the whole thing. A wash will just push things in the background and it really brings everything together. And to be honest with you, a lot of times I don't even know I'm gonna do it until I get done with the background. Um, and then it's like, yeah, that needs it, okay? And then a soft paper towel, my go-to or Viva. Little more expensive, but so worth it. And instead of wiping side to side, I'm gonna do that crazy eight again, just to kind of get a little bit of that texture and movement with that piece. And then let's dry it. Um, let me see, Linda, the butterfly is, and what I loved about this one is this one already has the flowers in it. So like on the B, I improvised and just put the flowers on. This is, let's see. So it is about four and three quarters inch by three and a half or less because it's gonna end there, okay? So it's a pretty good size, but let me show you guys a trick. I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry because I had a couple other things I was gonna show you with the stamp that you can do. A stamp is like a line drawing. So, you can stamp it, there goes my heat tool on the floor. You can stamp it onto a piece of paper, just like I did there. And I'm gonna pick up my heat tool, because I don't know if it's still hot. Um, okay, and then you can stick that into your printer and enlarge it. So, and then fussy cut around it, okay? Decoupage it onto your piece. Now, I have a laser printer and I also have a uh, photo printer that the ink doesn't run. So it does matter on that, all right? And I don't know what my, um, I don't know what my printer ink is. It's like 924, it's an HP. That's all I can tell you, all right? But just because the stamp is this size doesn't mean that you can't make it this size or make it even smaller if you wanted to, okay? So I'm gonna show you how I cut it out because I thought this was another cool idea. So I've been playing around and I did this with my membership group where we took board books from the Dollar Tree and painted on them. So this one is a Hansel and Gretel and I love that it has the pop-ups. So what I thought was really cool is once I get done painting it, I probably will attach that to there and then that will pop up when I do the, the page, right? So I just use regular gesso, you know? I mean, how cool is that? And then it will just lay flat. And you could do it on cardstock too if you wanted to, but uh, just a little something something I'm working on right now <laughs> with everything else. So let's move that. And then I do want a little softness over those leaves. So I'm gonna come back in, um, Tracy Moreau and I have a stencil line, M square. This is M280, it's brand new, absolutely love it. And I am gonna come in now with a little bit of that white that didn't show up last time, but it will show up this time subtly because it'll be on those leaves and everything. Again, just a little bit more. You see that as I turn it, just a little bit of design there, okay? Again, just here and there. Notice how I'm not following the stencil. I'm just kind of putting it on here and there. And again, unless you're right up on it, you don't see it, so I'm gonna turn it for you. Again, it's another layer, and that's what mixed media is all about, is the layers, all right? So I'm going to put a little down here, and it will take a little bit away from those brown toned leaves um, being on top. It pushes them back just a little bit. Okay, and maybe a little bit there. 
All right, so I'll move that away. Okay, so I would, wouldn't y'all love to see into Sandy's brain? <laughs> oh, Molly Ann, I would exhaust you guys. It exhausts me, um, but I love it. I'm very grateful and thankful. <laughs> okay, so I had this old stamp. It's a Stampers Anonymous stamp. It's no longer made. You could use any stamp. You could print off um, something from the computer. Again, that M2 stencil might look good with a little texture. Absolutely, Sue, like some modeling paste or something or even some gesso. Absolutely agree. Okay, and so I peeled it off to see whose it was because I just saw that. Um, so that was the real price. I think I paid like $3 for it on clearance years ago. But I liked the saying, and that's the thing with the butterfly, right? The butterfly doesn't know when it's a, a caterpillar that all of a sudden it's going to have this whole brand new life and have wings and people are going to look at it, you know, at this pretty thing flying around. And so I just thought that really fit with what I wanted to do today. So I printed it on regular tissue paper. Okay, and I'll show you how we're going to apply that in a second. But what I want to do first is kind of get my layout. So I think I want my layout like this is what I'm kind of thinking because, and maybe my words there, I don't want to do it center like I did the B because I want the words, you know, all together. Um, and I'm, I'm really thinking I like that layout. What do you guys think? Down here and the words up top or the butterfly up top and the words down low. Let me know what you think. While you're thinking about that, I'm gonna get my stamp pad. Thank you, Carol. I greatly appreciate that. Let me know what you think. Words at the bottom, words at the top. I love to include you guys. I so loved that when we did the B. Um, and a couple other lives that we've done. So, butterfly on top. I like the words down low. I, I agree. I kind of feel like this was the focal point and this, so, and I have some plans for this. Um, okay, we're going with butterfly up top. Seeing lots of comments about that. Now, when I load my butterfly up, I'm gonna get a piece of paper. Do I even have a piece of paper? I have that. Let me see if that cardstock. Um, oh, it's gray, but I'll show it on there and see. You want to stamp it on something before you put it on your piece because, hello. <laughs> um, once you put it on, it's on. Now, if you're missing lines, you can use an identi pen or a black permanent pen that does not bleed with water. Okay, and that's feeling a little dry, so I'm going to take this other one and really load it up. Okay, and so let's just lay it down, press it in place. Basically, what you're checking is to make sure that you have ink on all the design. Okay, and I do. Crisp, nice image. All right, and I'm going to make it probably a little bit darker with my pen at the end. So. All right, thank you, Vera. Congratulations on your retirement. I know those kiddos are gonna miss seeing you, but congratulations. All right, so we're gonna get that loaded up and I'm going to decide where it's gonna go. And I'm thinking again that it's gonna go right about there. Lay it down and then you really wanna press it in place. Words at the bottom, butterfly on top. You guys are in my head right now. It's exactly what I was hoping you would say because that's what I wanted to do. So again, we'll just make sure that it's, and you do wanna make sure when you're pressing on a, a stamp like this for your line drawing that you are pressing and holding with your other hand, otherwise it's gonna slip. And if it does, the only thing I have found that takes stays on ink off is hand sanitizer. The problem with that is it's gonna take the background off as well. So, and we've got a beautiful line drawing, right? I mean, hello, that's what that is. Um, 
I remember when I first started doing mixed media and stuff, and a lot of people were like, stamps and stencils are cheating when it comes to painting. Uh, no, they're not. They make it so much easier, so much more fun. Um, okay, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see a little bit. Okay. Now, before I put on my, well, you know what? I think I will put on my words because it can dry while I'm doing everything else. So, again, I painted this or stamped this on tissue paper, and I'm going to take a brush. doesn't matter which brush. Wet. And then I'm just going to do a line and kind of box it off. Hello, Scott Blankenbeckler. It's so good to see you on. My good friend from high school. Yes, it does look like you're looking up from the ground, right? Okay, and then you're just going to always put your thumb over the words. I don't use always in art a lot, but let me just tell you, if you don't and you that tears, it might tear your letter. So you just want to make sure that you've got this covered and the tearing is not going to go further than where your finger is for a nice little deckled uneven edge okay so yes and let me tell you too guys with stamps if you have a brand new stamp or if you've used it a thousand times stamp it on something before you do it on your piece to make sure that you've got the ink in all the places but especially if you've got a brand new stamp ink sticks to ink better than it sticks to rubber so once you have that ink on there i'll be 100 percent honest i don't wash mine all the time and when i do i just use a stamp uh, cleaning pad that my friend laura haverstraw gave me so um i do have this on my website jackie yes in the description on uh, facebook it says what it is it's floral flutter and i do have it on my website and then again don't forget to use your discount code and for you it's your membership discount code all righty so then i'm going to put this down here and i'm going to apply put that on with matte medium so this is my favorite go-to um the helps out with blending into the background better yes it does suzanne suzanne was saying that that deckled edge helps it you know kind of go into the background just subtle and it's not just a harsh rectangular square okay matte medium and what we want to do first is take a brush I'm gonna load it into that matte medium and you can be generous with it I mean not super wet but um, and then you want to make sure that it is completely covered before you lay your words in place and I'll put my words a little bit higher, just like the butterfly came a little bit higher. Make sure that they're straight. Let me, let me look and see. That's a little crooked. You have some time. And then I'm going to take that matte medium on top and just gently lay that right over. And it looks like it is part of that. Now, I could have stamped it right onto my surface, right? But I love the look of that uh, deckled edge around the tissue paper. I like the texture of the tissue paper, so that's why I put it on there. Thank you, Molly Ann. Yeah, it's that floral flutter stamp. Okay. So, let's... Hello, Darlene. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Let's get that dry just a little because I know I'm going to get my hand right into it, right? Alrighty. Thanks, guys. Yes, I was pleasantly pleased with how that stamp <laughs> came out. All the edges. Hi, Patty. Alright. So, it's going to take a little bit longer to but that matte medium will dry completely matte. You won't even be able to see it. Yes, good point too. Um, Suzanne said it looks like it's painted on. It, it does almost look like you did hand lettering um, without having to do the hand lettering, right? Okay, let's move this stencil. I know I'm going to need it again. Okay, let's come to the butterfly. And I'm actually going to do something a little in reverse. I typically wait till the very end to do these, but I'm going to do it now. 
Um, and I'm going to use the DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylics. Let me tell you, if you don't have any other color in the line, you need this color. This color makes the most amazing cast shadows. Uh, you can mix it with your Americana paints. I could mix those colors together if I wanted to. Um, I could darken that color with the Payne's Gray. It is my go-to. So I'm going to take a small flat brush. This is a number four. Get it very wet. Pick up just a little bit of that Payne's Gray. Get a little bit more water. Um, thank you, Sandra. I had the most amazing vacation. And now it's back to the grind. So I was happy. I was so happy to be back in my studio, though. Um, and then I have two classes with my membership group this week. So I was excited about getting all that prepped and ready, too. Okay, so I'm going to go just below that wing. And knowing what side to put the shadow on, since it's angled this way, if it were angled this way, I would be putting the shadow on the right side. Um, so since it's angled this way, I'm going to put that shadow on the left and you can go a little wide with that shadow what's it it's going to do is it's going to give the look that that butterfly is lifted up off the surface okay and then hello D and then maybe a little bit on that leaf just a little on the body a little on this wing but not all the way around there would only be a shadow kind of right in here that's a little too dark, I think, so we're going to soften that. Okay. And then maybe a little bit right there. And there on that leaf. Okay. So that's what we're going to do right now. And then I'm going to come in and start painting these flowers, but I want them to be soft and subtle. All right, so I am gonna zoom in just a little, okay? And I'm gonna bring some of those background colors. When you take your background colors and you bring them into your design, it really adds a softness and um, a cohesion that I love doing. D. Gats, thank you for the stars. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, you're too sweet, thank you. All righty, I'm gonna use the um, quarter inch faux squirrel angle, and I do want it slightly wet. So you could use your um, fast drying glaze medium, which is at my other workstation, hello. Um, I have the flow medium. I think I'll probably use a little bit of that. Or you can use water. Okay, and we just wanna get the brush dressed just a little bit. I'm just gonna kinda work it in. If you think you have too much, you can just tap it across your paper towel, okay? And then let's come in with the, um, we need a medium tone green first. So let's come in, nope, nope, we're gonna do that. We're gonna use that sour apple. I'll show you why. So we're gonna put that on the toe of the brush only. See, it's on the toe of the brush only, and I'm gonna work that in, turn the brush, work it in. Okay. And then we're going to paint in the leaves. So right at the base, just kind of start bringing that color on, on these leaves. I could have used a flat brush, but I knew I had these little tight corners to get into. So angle brushes aren't just for, um, for shading, you know, or for, for floating on a shade. It is, they can be used to paint in a whole item, especially if you need to get around another item like there. And so just a very loose layer of that green. There, it's gonna be transparent and that's totally fine. I'm happy with that, I'm gonna leave it. I am gonna put a little bit right in between these flowers there as if that greenery went even further. And then we have some right here and I can even add more later if I wanted to. Thank you, Marilyn, for the stars. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. You guys are the best. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. So, now I have to decide what colors. And I do think I want to bring that orange in. I think that orange will look really pretty. Um, maybe on the daisy. 
give it a little bit of warmth. Haven't decided yet, but we'll see. Um, and then I have a rose. So on that one, I think I will bring in that fuchsia pop and maybe even some quinacridone magenta, okay? It's very watercolory, very soft. I didn't want this to be real heavy or heavily painted. Um, but again, if I had to trace all those lines from a pattern, uh, it would take a while. And so that's the great thing about the stamp is being able to, to use that stamp. All right, I'm using the same brush. I'm gonna let the leaves dry and I'll come back to them. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of orange and I'm gonna put that at the base of these daisies. Petals, I should say. Very, very loosely, just kind of putting those on. We'll build up the layers. That's the thing as well, when you float color, it does not all have to be exactly the way it's going to end up. Layer another coat, just like you would if you were base coating in an element, okay? Okay. Yes, Cindy, I do have the stamp. It's on my website underneath the stamp tab. Um, you might have to go to the second page. And my website's supposed to be completely finished from the company by the end of this month to get rid of all these little glitches. But I don't know that that's going to happen. So, okay, now I have that... Um, what is that royal fuchsia on the toe of that brush again I want to I keep bringing my palette I want you to see how I'm loading it so a little bit of that royal fuchsia and just load it on the toe only thank you Molly Ann and then I'm gonna lay in at the base of these petals on this rose and then just kind of slightly bring it out a little. I'm gonna deepen that with that quinacridone magenta so I'm not fussed or worried if it gets more on um, the whole petal because when I come back and I darken that, I'll keep that quinacridone magenta at the base, which is just gonna give that flower a really pretty look, okay? And that brown that's on there, I love that from the leaf. If you wanted to, you could always come in and paint it with a little bit of white or off-white. Uh, warm white, excuse me, and um, and then build your layers from there. But I love that that brown is a little in that flower. So we're going to go with it. Because I will probably put a little bit of white on the tips of those petals just to bring them out a little bit more. And it will take away a little bit of that brown too. Okay, so we've got that again, very soft, watercolory, um, and we're going with it. Now, this one, I'm kind of thinking I want to put in a little purple. So I am going to use some Doxine Purple. I do carry these on my website, I do ship to Canada. Um, I only charge the exact shipping, nothing extra. So a little bit of that purple on the toe of that brush. This is such a strong color. You don't need a lot. Okay. And I'm going to, I don't even know what kind of flower this is, but we're just going to make it a pretty flower. How about that? And I'm just going to put in a little bit of that purple at the base of the petal. Pick up a little bit more and I will... Probably darken that and strengthen that. Turn that around. And here's a little tip too. You can take one of those flat top mops, kind of soften that if you need to. Thank you, Lois Ann. I love it too. I'm liking the direction. And I love just winging it because 
a lot of times things just come to me or, you know, y'all's input. Um, I feel like a lot of times I'm a lot more creative than when I have a plan. Okay. A little bit on there. All right. Let those set up for just a minute. I am going to come in with some, is that what it is? I hope it is. <laughs> Plantation pine. Okay. We'll get a little bit of that out. Shake it up. And then I am going to take that plantation pine on the toe of that brush, work it in. And let's come back to our leaves. Okay? So our leaves, I'm going to do just a little bit of shading along the base of those leaves. above that petal, above that petal, and then down that darker side, so the bottom of that leaf, bottom of that leaf, we'll do the right side of that one. Okay, so see the difference in how that just made those leaves really pop compared to just that sour apple, okay? But still transparent, you can still see through them Hi, Anne. Good to see you on. Hi, Patty. Okay, a little bit at the base, up that dark side. Again, plantation pine. You can use sap green in the media line as well. That would work well. And then I will come back and put a little bit on that side of the leaf. Bottom, 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 bottom. Okay. And then in here, where I can still see a little bit of that light, I do want to just pop in a little bit of that plantation pine. Okay. So, um, Cindy, this I got um, at Hobby Lobby years ago. I mean, I'm talking maybe 10 years ago. No, probably not that long. Maybe eight years ago. But if you put in that... Um, there's the number right there. Let me get the camera. If you put that in and Google it, you might be able to find it somewhere online. Okay? But it is a Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamp that's quite old. So, and discontinued. Okay. Now, let's come back with the Quinacridone Magenta on the toe of that brush. And again, I want that just on the toe, work it in on both sides. And I'm going to put this at the base of these petals on the rows. So at the bottom there, the base there, the base there. Keep my hand out of the way if I can. Again, just loose, loose little float. Nothing stressful. Kind of lay it on. Okay, I love that orange in there. It is giving that rose life. Okay, and then I am going to come back with um, the center here. I'm going to go ahead and do that plantation pine because I kind of feel like that triangle of design with those greens, that, that center. We'll go ahead and just make that green. So that's plantation pine, a touch of Payne's gray on the toe of that brush. And let me dry that. There is Deborah McDonald on my website. You can do A-R-T, all capitals. A-R-T, all capitals, and then make sure you hit apply. Okay. So that has the green and Payne's gray on the toe only. And we'll go ahead and deepen that just a little bit. I'll rinse out my brush. Thank you, Molly Ann. Right, that magenta really made a huge difference, I think. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of the sour apple and some white. And 
a little touch of Bahama blue because those colors together make a really pretty bright green. Okay, and I just want to get the top of this center right here. I'll probably bring it a little bit down there. But look at that. I mean, that color just, wow, makes it pop. So I'm going to come in with that quarter inch angle, white on the toe only, and very, very lightly kind of come in and just do a little wash of that white along the tips of those petals. Now, if you get into the line drawing from the stamp, um, Cheryl, I'm hoping they're in this week. I, uh, I've had them on order and um, twice now, and when my order came, they were back ordered. So... I will um, definitely let you guys know when those are back in stock. But again, hopefully, hopefully this week. So just a little bit of white. I don't have much on that brush because I don't want it to go too far. Just want to keep it right along the edge of that petal. And if you're kind of tapping that float instead of pulling it, you'll get a little, I'm going to pull it up so you can see it. See how that white goes down every now and then? It's not just a straight line. Um, that will just give you a really pretty tip to that petal instead of it being white and pink, okay? Now this one, I think this is the top of that petal. So we're going to put a little white there, a little white, and then just lightly back here, but we don't wanna make them as white there as they are in the front. Again, that pushes them back, brings the whiter ones closer, giving our flowers some dimension. Okay. And then again, like I said, going into the, the black lines, I will strengthen those with my Identa pen when I'm done, if they need it. And I think I'm gonna do the same on these and just put a little bit of white on the tips of these so that they have a little color. Oh, that one needs some purple. Just a little on the tip there. I know I need a little on there. Okay, so let's rinse that. Yes, thank you, Sue. Yes, I was talking about when your paint covers the lines. Again, I'm just going to come back with my go-to. You can use a fine tip, ultra fine tip Sharpie marker, the fine tip on an Identa pen, um, whatever black marker you have that doesn't bleed, okay? Now, I'm going to come back with some more purple and just darken that just a little. That's the thing is I, in the middle of talking, I look up and then squirrel you know. Oh, Margo just said if you put in the um, Stampers Anonymous, put that stamp information in, you'll be able to find that stamp. So, okay. Now, in the center of that, I just want a couple of dots of white. So, I'm going to use a stylus. Just dot into white. And then what I'll do is I'll outline them with black. And I think I'll do the same thing. Well, I wanna darken that. You know what I'm gonna darken the sunflower petals with? A little bit of that um, quinacridone gold that we used in the background. Oh yeah. Don't be afraid to use those fingers. Great little blenders. Okay. All righty. And then I am going to take a little bit of Dari Light Yellow. And it always sounds better when you say it with a southern accent. <laughs> Dari Lad Yellow. Um, again, it's transparent. 
We're going to use very, very little of it. Um, I want to make sure that this is dry. And I can see I need to bump up the white on that petal right there. So I am going to do that while that orange dries just a little. Again, make sure it's not hot. You can use a blow dryer. I just like that heat tool because it, um, it dries fast and it's so quiet. And it won't push your paint unless it's very liquidy and you want it to push the paint. Now all the shading in between those that we're gonna do is really gonna make that come together. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna add any colors to the butterfly, to be honest with you, I might, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take that angle brush, since I already have it, in my hand, get a little bit of water, and just a touch of that, um, would it be sure paint is dry or it will ruin that? Yes, very good point. Always make sure that is dry or your identipin will ruin. So that's that diary lied yellow. And I'm just going to wash that up on those petals. Make it a little bit more of a yellow daisy. Okay. And then I'm also going to wash it right over that uh, center where we did that highlight to brighten that a little. And I actually am going to bring it and put it a little bit on my rose because I think that looks really pretty. Almost like a peace rose. Okay, you know where else you can put it? On the leaves. And just brighten up that highlight side and that darker side is dark enough, it's not gonna be affected. Just like that. Okay. I'm digging the way this is going. My granddaughter loves tattoos but hasn't been overly excited about my paintings. She will love this for the first apartment. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome, Virginia. Okay. So I'm going to bump up one. I want to bump up the highlight here and the highlight on that petal. There, there. And then let's do some dots on that daisy. So I'm just gonna come back to this very small stylus with a little bit of white. Just put some dots there. The, the idea behind this, guys, with what I shared on the B a couple weeks ago and this is making it not look like it came from a stamp or a stencil. And then at some point you gotta know when to stop, Sandy. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna make sure this is 100% dry. We'll do a little shading. Again, still haven't decided if I'm gonna do much to that butterfly. I kind of like it black and white. What do you guys think? So yes, let me show the number again, guys, on that stamp, okay? If it's the floral flutter, you can just go to my website and you'll see it there. Um, there's not a number to it, it's just Stampendous Floral Flutter, okay? Um, Ooh, Molly Ann, that's a good idea. The Stampers Anonymous stamp that I used for the words is this one, okay? So Molly Ann's suggestion was, what about a little bit of Bahama Blue on that purple flower? I think that will look amazing, and we're gonna do it. Okay, because I need fresh Bahama Blue. Because that Bahama Blue and purple look so good together. Not everywhere, just a little bit. Magical. Good call, Molly Ann. Yes, 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 yes. And maybe even a little in the center. Okay. I like the black and white. Leave it. Love the contrast. Black and white. Totally, totally agree. Um, totally agree. Alrighty. But what I do want to do is I'm going to come back in with the 
um, Payne's Gray, and I'm going to come right up underneath, and I do want these to be quite rich. Um, so I just saw Nancy's comment. Probably not, Nancy. I um, At some point, I probably will put these on my website, my originals, um, but not sure when. I'm going to enjoy them for a while in my studio. I do know that. And since this is winging it, and I don't have another one, it's, it's a one of, um, I'm going to wait a while. But thanks for asking. I appreciate that. Sometimes I do give them away. I have given them away. So I just want to do a little shading with that paint gray to have this stand out and stand up from the butterfly just a little bit. Especially on that side. And then doesn't look like his body is real defined, so I am going to do a little shading there to make it a little more defined. All right, let me look real quick, see what I want to add, what I want to do. <laughs> no problem, Virginia. That frown face kind of gets in the way, doesn't it? So... Did you see that, Linda? I'll put it up again. That's the number for the um, word stamp. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dee. I do love sending my members the journal pages when I can. Um, all right. Guess what we need? We need some splatter. <laughs> so I'm going to zoom out just a little. And I love to use um, splatter of the colors that are in my piece. Um, so I am going to do some pink because we've got pink here, subtly pink in our background, and I want to bring a little bit of that pink out. So I'm going to get a brush, number eight flat. Let me zoom out even more. Didn't go enough. There we go. Okay. Thanks, guys. So, and again, don't forget when you order, where's that at? These are going out in orders this week. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pick up that quinacridone magenta, a lot of water in my brush, pick that up, work it in, work that in, that stamp with the words, you can Google it, put it in your Google search engine, I don't carry it, it's been discontinued for quite some time, as far as I know, I got it about eight years ago, okay, so that's the quinacridone magenta. I used a small brush, which means I'm going to have small splatter. The bigger the brush, the bigger the splatter. All right. And then a soft paper towel, because I want to take that and just knock it back just a little and give you a stained look versus heavy splattered look just sitting on top of the surface. Okay. And then we'll come in. Thank you, Linda. Um, we'll do some white. Funny enough, the white will show up because we have other colors going on. And I'm just taking the middle of this brush, the middle of this brush, and I'm going to tap on some white, and I need more water. Notice how that didn't come off as easily. There we go. And again, here and there, but not everywhere. Pick up a little more, Sandy. There we go. Okay, I'm going to leave it for a minute. Now, any place you don't want it, you want to take your wet brush while it's wet and get it off. So I don't want it, like if there's just one like that right there, I tend to take it away. Okay? Or if it looks like it's out of place or it looks like it's morphed into a bunch of dots, I will take that away as well. Same thing. Lay down my paper towel. Lightly soften it. Now I had a thought I was gonna do it and I don't know that I'm gonna do it now. I was gonna take a gift card and do some lines around that, but I really am liking that. So I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna use a gift card and show you. Um, these are, <laughs> you guys know I travel. I save all my hotel keys. I usually give one back 
but I save all the others. Gift cards, so. And then when I go teach a class somewhere, I can always pull these out and use them because I have plenty. All right. What other color do I want to do? Payne's gray. I want a dark dot. And I'm going to load that up. Very wet with the Payne's gray. It's not as harsh as black. Even though we've got black going on here, it's going to mimic black. So we'll put a little black there. Maybe a little there. And a little here. And now I do want to make sure I get some of those dots off. Dang. This, I just, I love splatter. It just has such a softness to the piece. Um, add a little there. And then again, let it sit for a second. Lightly touch it. You don't have to do this step. I just like the way it looks. I like the way it um, makes the splatter soft. And, um, oh, thanks, D. Yep, and go back to the beginning to see all of it. Okay, and I really could beef up some of these shadows. Um, not going to do that right now. Baby wipe. I kind of want this to tie in, like I said, with my B. And since I used in the leaves the quinacridone and in the flowers, I am going to do that along the edge. And again, I'll come over here to my palette. I took a baby wipe, wrapped it around my finger, back and forth. And I want, this is key, the palm of your hand inside, all right? If you're out here, it's going to leave a very harsh line. So you want the palm of your hand on the inside of your surface. And I like to round those corners on those squares. And you can darken it if you want this to be a touch darker, which I believe we did on the B, if I remember correctly, with a little bit of asphaltum. Or you can do a second layer, but it's much easier to do it once, leave it, and don't keep going over it. If you do, it's just going to lift. See how that going over a second time is going to give you a little darker color. So, let me push that up so you can see it. Okay. I'm going to, let me see, let me see, let me see. I can't decide if I want to. I'm going to do it, and if I don't like it, I can wipe it off, right? It's just paint. Um, so, I'm going to take my card, and I'm going to go right through that Payne's Gray. Okay, and then I like to run it somewhere on my palette. But I'm thinking if I do, I kind of like that. a little bit longer oh yeah it kind of frames the piece in I don't know why I'm turning it I need to okay and then running it through run it back on my palette okay that didn't go so great so guess what wipe it off I got it crooked so I am gonna turn it And I always love giving credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this. Andy Skinner's the first person I saw do it, and I've always loved it since. Okay. And that one got a little long, so guess what? Just take a little bit of it away and leave it. I'm loving it. Okay, so let me put this and pair it with the... Um, this one so similar colors stencil it's a little bit darker this one's a little softer fresher I love that background with that Bahama blue um, and yeah love the way that that turned out so and like I said I am doing a dragonfly with my membership group I'll share a picture with you guys it's just gonna be a freehand dragonfly stencil stamp um, and then a freehand so 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that and I shared tips and tricks with you that maybe you didn't know. Um, I could keep going. Like I said, I really want to bump up some of those shadows, especially between the petals. Um, but I love the way that that came out. And um, I hope y'all did too. Okay. So one thing I typically do is I... I get done and then I can get off right away. But what I want to do right now is just take a, a second. I won't be able to go through all of them um, to answer some questions. So Lynn, I don't have both stamps. I have the butterfly stamp. I have this stencil, but this stamp, you have to look on Google for it. Um, it is a Stampers Anonymous. I don't carry it. I got it about eight years ago or more. Um, so if you can find it, if not, you know, you can print something off on your, um, computer or use a different, a different stamp. So, um, thank you, Bev. I love the way it turned out too. So no problem, Lynn. Glad you made it after all. All right, guys. <laughs> I am sweaty. Um, all right, I'm just going to scroll up real quick. Dynasty brushes you used in sizes. I pretty much use for the whole thing <laughs> um, my quarter inch um, faux squirrel dynasty brush, my three eighths dynasty stencil pro. What else? For the background, I used a baby wipe. For the wash, I love this brush. It's the one inch. This one's really bad. Sorry, Veronica. <laughs> a dynasty brush, but you can tell it's well loved. I use it a lot. Um, it's a it is a flat wash brush, so you can use it for watercolor. You can use it for acrylics. Um, it's amazing, and I love that it has an acrylic handle because if I leave it in the water for just a little bit longer than my others, it's not going to crack. Okay, and then the um, soft, the medium soft flat top mop if you want to um, soften out the look of the color that goes on. Okay? All right. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to our winners. Um, I don't have the names there, but, um, again, go back to the beginning, and I announced the three winners. I'll have three giveaways on our live next week, and I know it's July 2nd. Um, July 4th is, of course, 4th of July here in the States, but I'm still going to do a live on um, Sunday. Not exactly sure what it's going to be yet. We will see. So, um, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Alrighty. Have a wonderful week. Like I like to tell you guys all the time, make sure to get those brushes out, get that paint out, do something creative. If you're not feeling it, if you're feeling stressed, if you're feeling overwhelmed and you just need something to do, but you don't want to do a project, pull out a surface, base coat it. The action of doing that will lead to the action of actually sitting down and creating. Okay. Greatly appreciate for the people that left the stars. Um, in the comments, thank you so much for that donation. Again, that will go to World Central Kitchen. And um, just blessed that you guys are here, that I get to be here with y'all, and hope that you have a wonderful, creative week. All right? Talk to y'all later. Bye. I'm going to leave you with a picture of our finished pieces from the last couple.